Let's go. We're going to talk about SIPA in this video. You may be wondering, what is SIPA? Or you've intentionally typed in S-I-P-A. Either way, you're in the right place. Let's get into it. When I first started working for a cybersecurity company, everyone was talking about SIPA. And I was looking around, thinking, well, I have no idea. what I've never heard of SIPA before working here. So I did the usual thing. I asked around. I did some research, looked it up, read into it. And there were still some gray areas. There's still some areas to SIPA that I didn't really understand. The concept totally makes sense to me. Source IP anchoring. It does what it says on the tin, right? So it's anchoring the IP address from a specific source. So if you've got third parties that need to see you coming from a specific IP address for whitelisting, then SIPA makes sense. However, there were still some gray areas, some pieces of the puzzle missing that I've since found out that I'm going to explain in this video. When it comes to using source IP anchoring or SIPA in Zscaler, there are a couple of different moving parts. Now you have the client side, the Zscaler app or ZCC, Zscaler Client Connector on the user's machine, on the endpoints. User is authenticated and they uh, need to access something that has to come from a specific source uh, so that it can be whitelisted by a third party, for example, the most basic use case of SIPA. So there are a few different things, and this is why it gets confusing. On the surface, it looks like there's a lot happening, but it's all pretty self-explanatory once you see it end to end. So what I've done, I've created a diagram, we'll run through this, and then I'll show you what it looks like in the admin portal. So ZCC, Zscaler client, picks up the fact that a user is trying to reach something that has to be forwarded in a very specific way via SIPA. Zscaler internet access is typically used to pick that request up in the first place. And in ZIA, we have a forwarding policy. On the left, you can see where that menu lives. This is in the ZIA admin portal itself. It will be in a slightly different place if you're using the Experience Center. We've got obviously some basic information around the policy name. The forwarding method is to ZPA. So even though it's hit Zscaler internet access, its next stop is gonna be Zscaler private access. And as a general rule of thumb, to reach app connectors and virtual appliances that uh, attach to Zscaler or Zscaler Cloud Tenant, they typically need ZPA in order to, to broker that communication. So Z, ZIA picks it up, forwarding policy says, ah, this is something SIPA related. You're gonna have to go and use ZPA. To get there, we have a ZPA gateway defined in Zscaler Internet Access. And that gateway object and the forwarding policy are associated with an app segment that I've appropriately named SIPA app seg. When it hits ZPA internally, so all of this happens in you know milliseconds within a Zscaler infrastructure. You know These are things sat in rack side by side. So this is not something that causes any delay. It's a number of logical hops, if you will. In ZPA, we've got a couple of rules. Um, the first one, if you, if you copy this, so give it a sensible name, uh, select the application segments, your ZPA application segments that have apps that need to be sippered, for lack of a better term. Client type, client connector, that's where it's coming from. You wanna bypass ZPA. Now, the, what that actually does, I've put it in gray here in brackets for rule one and rule two. Essentially, the first rule is telling the platform that ZCC don't go straight to ZPA to reach this. You have to go to ZIA first. The second rule says, allow ZIA to actually forward that request to ZPA. And this will make a lot more sense in a moment. We have the application segment in ZPA defined. So the app seg itself contains things that we want to zipper. So I've got wildcard.ipchicken.com and an IP address which I intend to reach via RDP. You specify your port ranges as well. So for this URL, obviously I'm going to need 443, 480, and then obviously for my RDP connection, 3389. See, so this is where you specify what you're trying to reach and the ports required to reach those things. And interestingly, this is where you associate a server group. And then within the server group, which I've done in purple, I've tried to show throughout the process, the relationship between these different components in different colors. Um, every app segment needs an access policy in ZPA, which just for our testing purposes, just allow access to everything 
uh, in the app segment. Uh, your client type is going to be the ZIA service edge though, and that's key because at this point, when you hit the access policy and you're trying to reach things in this app segment, you're not coming from the client anymore. This is an internal thing that's happening from the ZIA service edge. So that's why we specify ZIA service edge as the client type for this access policy. Our server group that I spoke about a short moment ago contains our app connector group. And the app connector group is ultimately the destination because we don't target a specific individual app connector, the virtual appliance that you deploy for Zscaler to reach private stuff in your environment. Why? Because it'll be a single point of failure. So we actually only ever target a group and obviously you can have multiple members of that group, multiple app connectors deployed and associated with that group. From there, that app connector will have a public IP address. So that will be what you would give to the third party to whitelist your access to this black box, the application itself, wherever that may live. So that is a whistle stop tour top to bottom for source IP anchoring in Zscaler. So now that we've got that uh, process defined and it's pretty pretty self-explanatory once you go through it step by step, you can see why I put this into a picture because just talking to this flow and the components involved in each step that has to be taken can be a little bit confusing. So what I'm gonna do now is show you side by side the flow diagram that I created and shared for this video on the left of your screen and on the right hand side I've logged in to Zscaler Identity, Z Identity, in order to access ZIA and ZPA. Now you can do this in the Experience Center UI. There's a link in the Z Identity portal that will take you straight to that, and you can do all of these different parts in the same place. That is the purpose of the new admin user experience, admin experience, the new UI for admins, is that you can access both sides of the platform, those core components under the hood, from one place. But I know that a lot of customers have been using the ZIA dedicated portal, the ZPA dedicated portal for a number of years, and the steps are the same, it's just a different place, and the language is the same. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like uh, in ZIA directly and ZPA directly. The good news is, as you can see in the diagram, there's not actually that much to configure in ZIA. So I'm gonna click on the Zscaler Internet Access tile in my ZR Identity Lab first, and I'm just gonna minimize. I know this will be really small on your screen now, but we don't really need it too much. I'm just gonna show you the right-hand side in the ZIA portal itself. So I've logged into my demo environment for ZIA. If we head over to policy on the left here and then click on forwarding control down the bottom right here of the menu, or you could click on search and just type in forwarding control and click this link. Either way, you end up in the same place. I've got a rule here for SIPA. My ZPA application segment is SIPA. Uh, AppSeg, which is, that's what I called it. To get there, you need to go and talk to this SIPA gateway. Now, before you create the forwarding rule, you have to create the gateway because you need to specify the gateway in the forwarding rule. So we need a gateway first. To configure a ZPA gateway, you need to go to administration on the left, scroll to the bottom, and you'll see Zscaler private access. Here you can see I have a SIPA gateway associated with the SIPA server group that I created in ZPA, which we'll go to in a second, and my app segment again called out there. So people trying to reach things that live in this app seg, you need to go to this gateway. From there, we'll hop over to Zscaler private access. So here we are in ZPA, head over to policy, client forwarding policy, and I have my two rules, one to bypass ZPA, go to ZIA first, and one to forward to ZPA, but crucially from the correct client type, ZIA service edge. So you can see here, these are the two rules that you're going to need to make SIPA work. The flow on the left in this diagram doesn't quite match the order in which you need to create these things. So these are the rules you're going to need, but in these rules you can clearly see I have called out the criteria which is my app segment. So you're gonna to wanna to create this first in ZPA as well. And I know this is the kind of wrong order. Uh, I'm just showing you the where these things live in the admin portals in the same order in which the actual flow happens. So for app segments, you wanna head into 
resource management, application management, and then application segments. And it's in here that you define a, an app segment for SIPA. So you can see my app segment here called SIPA app seg and the source IP anchor flag or option is enabled. So that's super important. So when you uh, do the ZIA configuration, when you configure the components and the parts that we looked at in Zscaler internet access, those things only show up from ZPA if this is turned on. So your app segs that are turned on for, for SIPA will be the ones that you can select um, to forward traffic to ZPA if anyone tries to reach things in a SIPA enabled app segment. So just for clarity, in the top right, if I add an application segment, you can see here, this is where you need to enable source IP anchor to cancel out this. Once you've created your app segment, naturally, the next step typically is to create an access policy. So again, you're under policy, access policy. So you've created this logical group of things that can be accessed via SIPA, forwarding the traffic in that way. But how are you going to allow access? And that's why we need this access policy for our app segment as well. So I've created this uh, access policy called SIPA access policy. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you're trying to reach this or this, uh, your client type is ZIA service edge, allow. Allow that ZIA service edge to get the traffic to that place. Now you'll remember I touched on the fact that we need a server group as well. If you head over to configuration and control and then uh, private infrastructure, and server groups, you see here I have a SIPA dash server group, server group, okay? So this is where you would basically group the things that uh, are the, the, the ultimate group of destinations for things that you're using SIPA to forward the traffic to. So that is, uh, essentially it has a relationship with the app connector group, and it's in there that you would um, associate your app connectors. So again, under private infrastructure, you can go to app connector groups. And this is where you would group your application connectors. So obviously this is a lab environment. So these are all pretty much standalone in different places, but for resiliency, you would have multiple app connectors in, in multiple places. Uh, typically is what I see in different customer environments. Awesome. So our SIPA traffic's been picked up, forwarded, processed, and it's landed in the group of app connectors that have public IP addresses that are known to our third parties that host the apps that we're trying to reach that have been whitelisted. Now, there's a couple other things to mention. So if you wanna add more, more services, more things to your SIPA setup, you can either break out as a separate app segment and have a dedicated flow to that, or you can just add more applications to this app segment. So whatever destinations you add to this app segment that you've configured, that will be processed as a SIPA application. And in terms of people and access, it's the forwarding policy in ZIA that looks after that. So this is where you select which users and groups this policy applies to. I hope this video was useful and source IP anchoring in Zscaler makes a lot more sense. Thank you for watching.